So what I'd like to do now is, if you have any questions that we can answer before we start our exercise, once we start our exercise, we're going to be going around to the different tables. So if you just have some questions you'd like to ask us one-on-one, -on -one, we can go around. We'll answer those questions. But um, let's take a few minutes to ask some questions. Yes. and become like 75,000? Are they going to remain the smaller size but just go up? Or are you going to allow the buildings to just become huge, aggregate. big buildings, aggregate? So what we're showing in the vision plan right now, we haven't addressed whether their buildings are going to get wider and multiple properties um, consolidate. What we have suggested is that we want the upper stories to step back from the street to preserve views. So if that's something that's a concern to you, please put it on your paper. Private, there's no prohibition against private land consolidation. You, if you can buy your neighbor's property and make it two adjacent parcels, fine. Uh, if he doesn't want to sell, then you can't consolidate. There's no public consolidation. Yes, Roberta? about when you say the San Antonio because I'm concerned about the people I'm concerned about the people that live across from San Antonio Road all the the homes where people might be then parking their cars over and walking across San Antonio Road so the area on your map that is orange is we're calling the Edith neighborhood the area that's purple we're calling the San Antonio neighborhood right within the triangle. How does the planning that you looked at for the various scenarios in terms of parking spaces per uh, unit of uh, offices compare to Las Gatas? We looked at not only Las Gatas, but Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, and Burlingame to, to develop a, a, a consistent parking policy for you. Uh, the, the change in the specific standards of Los Gatos and, and here are a little different. Each city is a little bit different. Los Gatos had some constraints with their parking assessment system previously. Um, then uh, after, the er after the 89 earthquake, they couldn't rebuild because they couldn't change use because the parking assessments locked them in place. Uh, we did some work there that loosened that up and helped them redevelop and made the parking policies more flexible. My question, though, is the uh, analysis the econo was economic analysis. It was dollars and cents. What about feet on the street? That's another measure of vitality that it probably is equally important, if not more so. You, you give me a rigorous way to count that and compare it to historically what has happened, I'll be happy to use it. But you're right. That's why one of the things that we want to make sure that we, we look at the economic side, so the sales, but then we also look at placemaking and creating great spaces that will attract people on the street. We look at getting office down there and getting more residential down there to put people on the street. So it's a combination of all of those things. One more question over here. Well, hold on. We're going to bring you the mic so everyone can hear. Who, where's, who's Either one. Pick one. <laughs> Yeah, question, did you run traffic simulations with uh, the increased economic activity and now you're blocking off a lot of the side streets or at least you're slowing down the traffic on those? Have there been simulations done about the, uh, the traffic flow? John, do you want to answer that? No, we hadn't. This is a, a downtown visioning process, so it's a high-level policy document that we're creating. So it'll put in place the future actions that we, the city council and the, the community could take forward or move forward on and we'll do more specific analysis at those times. So what I want you to do at your tables is each table has a matrix like this. And the matrix, it has all the alternatives across the top and then it has the primary, the primary program elements going down the side. And what I'd like you to do is start at the very top at entry elements and talk amongst yourselves which one of the entry element options would you prefer and you have all the scenarios on your table that you can re reference back to so you look at scenario one and it says um, en enhanced paving and landscape treatment 
and then you look at scenario two and it says monument columns and then you have scenario three which has the archways and I want you to take a marker or a pen and put an X on the one that your table um, prefers. You try to get an agreement but if you can't build consensus on it then tell us three people want this and two people want this so we have a on the back you can give an I we give you an opportunity to elaborate on that if there's something that you another idea or if there's something that you would like to elaborate on do it on the back of that page so the, the group asked us to um, uh, ask me to say a little bit about who the group was we're all 45 plus we're all residents about 20 years plus no merchants no uh, downtown property yeah, there you. so just trying to give a, a sense of who we were um, the scenarios, so we picked out of the entry elements uh, the uh, enhanced paving and the sculptures and landscaping, and we liked roundabouts. So uh, the two outside ones I mentioned were um, unanimous of the roundabouts. Uh, we need to do some ex examinations of them. Uh, on the pedestrian connections, no underground was uh, something we said, and bridges or overground in both places. Don't like undergrounds, like the uh, crossings. For both of those, paseos, not too many, but like the idea, so not extensive numbers. I'm sorry, I mean, if you want to just stick to Oh, you, oh. Yeah, yeah. Just oh, stick wow. to <laughs> five, oh, oh, sure. five. Yeah. Thank you, just so we can get through. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Good. We like what you're doing, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's the guy with the hook? Um, shared streets was number one. Uh, we like that shared street idea, including expanding it out from the San Antonio area. The facade improvements and creating downtown frontage so that San Antonio looked out to San Antonio rather than looking inward. Um, the activity nodes was really highly liked. We lo loved the activity nodes. Uh, affordable housing and step back on the third story. We're okay with third story anywhere, but step it back. We like that. And the affordable housing, absolutely got to do that. The outdoor, uh, or the theater, we said, well, hmm, I'm not sure about theater, but gee, if that was an outdoor theater, and an amphitheater could be used for all sorts of different events and meetings and stuff, I really like that. Um, and the gathering squares, the kids' performances and more. Uh, and then, um, oh, I already said that the underground crossings, no, at <coughs> overground crossings. Perfect, thank you very much. You're up. My name is Megan. Uh, number one, we like the idea of the roundabouts a lot. Number two, we like crossovers, not under underground uh, crossings. Number three, um, we said with regard to the entries, let's take the current granite blocks or blanks that we have around town and expand the use of them or make them a little bit bigger. And like the look. Um, number four. We just combined all the outdoor dining, plus the paseos, plus the plazas, plus the activity nodes, and the shared streets. Just make it more communal. And on the last one, no theater. Don't be thinking about that. Hello, I'm Vicki Reeder. I'm here with four former mayors. And I'm so, uh, we uh, I'm going to the theater just a few minutes. So, our top priority, we thought, for our group was the Central Plaza concept. Second, three stories, we, without it, nothing can happen. Affordable housing, higher density in the affordable housing. Improved entryways, we like roundabouts, plus overpasses, as other groups have said, but not underpasses. Uh, the shared streets, we also really like. We'd like to see them more on, this, on second and third than on main state. And we have number six, a theater. Uh, if you've ever been in the bus farm, you know we need a better facility than we have there. So, theater and public restrooms. Thank you. Hello, I'm here. I'm going to read it because I know I'm going to read my writing. Uh, we like to have number four a lot. We didn't worry about the cost of measures. The focus is on people, not cars. It offers the most vitality. Uh, we like the overpasses and we like the roundabout. Shared streets and the central plaza parts, brilliant ideas, yes. Workforce housing, another yes, gotta have it. Activity nodes, a very nice, low-cost feature with plenty of public art, and along with the more expensive live theater. Hi, I'm Bart Nelson, and uh, our table really had a lot of fun with this. 
We had uh, conflict, we had negotiation. So we came up with our number one to uh, increase uh, the public meeting places, gathering places, was our number one thing, public gathering. Uh, number two, uh, increase density. So as we increase density, we thought we'd go up higher, we increase the green space around it, make it more community active, increase the uh, activity from our residents. Number three, um, we really like the concept of the uh, streetscape being open, areas for bikes and pedestrians, and we thought that would increase people to not use cars, use more biking, more walking. Uh, number four, number four, um, we like the idea of, of workforce housing, however, we don't engage it downtown. We don't see the workforce housing as adding to the vitality during the day. So we said, office downtown, workforce housing, yes, but find another location. Uh, number five, uh, yes, on the theater for sure, we need that nighttime activity and a place for everybody to gather. Hello everybody, I'm Nika Bermeau. And um, first things first that we did was completely remove option one <laughs> from everything. And um, yeah, start off with number one. We put strong connections with the community, including roundabouts and overpasses for pedestrians. Number two, we put a boutique hotel. And um, I'm gonna explain this one a bit. So we put this as number two because we feel like a boutique hotel, we already have a hotel, and uh, that just brings way more traffic to downtown and that boosts the businesses and that just makes way more money for other community events and other things. Uh, three, we put a performing arts center, so a theater and stuff of the sorts like that. Um, number four, activity nodes, but here we put keep them limited and focused and quote, uh, make them special. So instead of having multiple of them just scattered around having one or two people, just keep them focused, just like say 10 people on the same one and it'll just make everything more focused together. And number five, underground parking with plazas above. Thank you. Hi, I'm Norma Schroeder, and at our table, at our table, uh, we thought probably the most important feature to implement, as, the most important feature to implement as quickly as possible would to be putting the public plazas, a spine of them, on the two, three, and four, turning that into a park. That will be very attractive, attracting pedestrians and a lot of vitality. <clears throat> to complement that, the second thing we do is put those shared streets on 2nd and 3rd Street because that will make it safer for the pedestrians who are attracted to the shared spine of parks. Third, uh, we think that underground parking would be preferred to any kind of structure. We didn't really understand how the wraparound retail would work. Uh, so we would like to see that. We are somewhat puzzled by who would pay for it. Uh, <laughs> Um, the architecture should not duplicate the canyon that was on First Street, so it's okay to have two or even three stories with a setback on, uh, on Main Street and State. However, we did have one dissenter who wanted to keep everything at two stories. We think it's very important to integrate mixed use and office and 100% uh, retail, so we like the idea of offices on the top. And when it comes to uh, <clears throat> some other pedestrian features, we prefer the, the crossovers over San Antonio and over Foothill Expressway, and we don't really think the underground tunnels will work. And for the other features, we had very mixed opinions and some dissension, so we had uh, no consensus. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kristen. Um, we had an amazingly agreeable group. <laughs> um, I think most of our decisions kind of aligned with scenario three. Um, we were, in terms of the crossings, um, we were concerned about handicap use, and so we thought that maybe underground would be easier if you were in a wheelchair or on a bike. Um, but someone would have to dig a little deeper on that one. Um, in terms of stories of buildings, um, we all agreed that we needed some three-story buildings. Um, we like the setback scenario um, in all the uh, different neighborhoods. Um, we liked the live theater. Um, we were mixed on the parking. Some of us didn't like underground parking. 
others of us didn't mind it. Um, one very Im important and interesting suggestion was from an employee standpoint that we built the parking garage over here and employees walked over into town from this size. What's that? Or was shuttled over. That was a really good suggestion. And I would just throw in if we had a town trolley or some other type of transportation system that we could transport kids and the elderly into town more easily, that would be a great idea. Um, anything else I'm leaving out? Great, thank you very much. Hi. Well, basically uh, on the entry elements, uh, four of us agreed that the enhanced paving and landscaping treatments were the way to go and two preferred scenario number th two, sorry, number three, Five big takeaways. Okay, so uh, and that was uh, the Paseos. All of us agreed that there was not enough. Nobody would want to give up land between the buildings for Paseos, and so we all agreed that it should be a uh, scenario number one. Uh, we all were concerned about uh, the the parking because uh, the basically the comments um, that uh, you know that. Y yeah, that, that, well, not that not enough parking. Uh, that if we should build uh, a parking structure first, we didn't say above ground or over ground, uh, um, before we do any enhancement or streetscape uh, kind of activities. And um, let's see what else. Uh, let's see. Uh, and, and then we had really mixed results uh, because three people thought that it would be a good idea to have a theater. One was against it, and one said for outdoor theater only. And um, and the parking. Yeah, the, the parking was, uh, uh, do, do, me a fa do me a favor. Uh, John, yeah. you, you, you discussed the parking issue, if you please would. So the big question on parking is making sure that there's adequate parking uh, and it's provided prior to some of what's being proposed in terms of construction and to also recognize the reality that in the new world of Uber and Lyft and autonomous vehicles, we also have a phenomena called Netscope and BP where offices are getting two and three times the number of employees in the, the amount of space that was originally planned. So we need to factor that into our planning uh, calculations. Hello, I'm Liz Nyberg. We had a great group, didn't all agree. So on entry elements, we really like a roundabout at um, Edith in San Antonio, and we liked overpass at the same spot. We don't necessarily like the long ramps for the handicapped. We thought elevators at each end would be nice, expensive, perhaps. Um, <laughs> connection to Lincoln Park, we just thought that was wasteful. I'm sorry. Um, well, you can cross at Maine, you can cross at Edith, but we didn't think we needed anything in the middle. Uh, Paseo connection, we pass through on using the stores. And nobody wants to give up a store for a paseo, so uh, we kind of let that one go. We like shared streets along the portions of second and third streets. We thought that would be very attractive. And um, public plazas, we like um, parking plaza five. What did I mean by that? Public Plaza, we really wanted that to be uh, on just perhaps Plaza 5 because we were concerned if we had the whole spine, uh, how would the stores get their deliveries and the garbage pickup, and we would lose a lot of parking. Um, but some in our group liked along 4, 5, and 6. Okay. All right. Live theater, we like it very much. And we like one affordable workforce uh, building at Plaza 8. Uh, shared streets along 2nd and 3rd Street. I think I said that. And we like three stories very much downtown. Uh, they need to be set back, and they need to be attractive buildings. 
the uh, things that what people really liked were the shared streets, the outdoor dining, the roundabouts uh, with the overpass. We agree with the other groups about no, not doing the underpasses. Um, community gathering areas and the activity nodes to create uh, vitality. Uh, creative use of the plazas for workforce, housing, and office. Three stories on the perimeter. Uh, in other words, outside of Main and State with setback of the third floor. And we had one person very concerned about uh, possible traffic uh, with the workforce housing office uh, situation. And we had one strong voice for the live theater. And um, we had a few strong voices for finally right-sizing the parking requirements in the town. Thank you, I'm Kurt Powell. Uh, we had a good discussion. We think keeping the heights at human scale is important whether they're two-story or three stories, each story doesn't need to be as tall as the first and main building. But two, three stories can work if the building's not too tall. We think no archways. We don't want Los Altos to look like Redwood City. Uh, keep the current granite monument design and add to it if necessary. We like above ground pedestrian crossings. Uh, we say make downtown bicycle and pedestrian focused with the streetscapes. Uh, I say move employee parking away from the downtown because it's just cl clogging up the downtown. And uh, last of all, activity nodes, yes. Hi, I'm Teresa. Um, we didn't. We had a lot of consensus at our table. We didn't get real far on some of it. Um, basically. Uh, Crossings at street level um, with one underground at San Antonio and the library was suggested. Nobody really cared for the over street um, crossings because of the fact that it blocks views and it wasn't me that said it. Um, entranceways, not enhanced, no archway, but a flow that works better. All of them are kind of congested, they back up, so it'd be nice if that was addressed and changed with this plan. Um, parking, keep the plazas, add underground, um, at least one underground I would assume, and make it employee parking, so that would be one way to keep the plaza above ground parking for um, shoppers would be to have all employee parking below ground. Um, everybody pretty much preferred scenario one, um, but there were a couple okay with, uh, one person was okay with taller buildings on San Antonio. Um, the the uh, overall consensus was keep the heights as they are because of the fact that they will automatically go up given the exceptions in the laws. So if you have a two-story building, you're gonna have a three-story, possibly a four-story, possibly a five-story anyway. So keep the heights as they are. Um, okay with one plaza being a public plaza, but not all of them. And uh, parking plaza five was the suggested one that would be a nice public plaza. Thank you very much, Teresa. We made it, give yourselves a hand. That was fantastic. Well done, well done. So just want to remind you folks that all this information will be available on the project website um, and we'll put a link up. There should be um, information with the, on the, um, the agendas that you have as well. Um, all, so the presentation, the PDF of all this will be available there. Please leave all the information that you filled out on the table so we can collect them and, and gather all your, your information you shared. And just one last note for those that weren't here at the workshop, there will also be a questionnaire that will go live hopefully tomorrow to gather additional input from folks that weren't here tonight. So definitely share the word. And thank you so much for being here and, and sharing all this valuable time with us. I want to also add that this meeting has been videotaped, so we're going to be putting the videotape online, and especially the presentations by the consultants. If you want to let somebody know that wasn't able to attend this evening, they can go online, look at the four scenarios, look at the presentations, get the information, the background information, and then provide the, um, the responses and feedback. So look forward to seeing all of that. And thank you all again very much.